Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an integral. We have the square root of x minus the square root of x, and we're going to integrate the reciprocal of this function. So, how do we go about this? Well, we're going to be using substitution, but along the way, you're going to see some interesting math, so stay tuned. So what am I going to do? Well, there is a couple ways to go about it. You know, when we have radicals, we tend to call them u and then just go with the u substitution. But it's very important what you pick as your u. So in this case, I'm going to look at the innermost radical here. So I'm going to call this expression u. So basically what I'm trying to say is that my naming or, or whatever the substitution is, it's going to be square root of x is equal to u. So I'll go off of that. If I square both sides, I get x is equal to u squared. Obviously, whenever you call something u, you're supposed to evaluate du. So you want to know what x is in terms of u. Now, if you differentiate both sides or uh, how do you say that? Differential both sides, then you're going to be getting dx is equal to 2u du. All right. So I'm not going to repeat that 2u thing. OK, but if you want to see it 2u. OK, so that's my dx. Obviously, I'm going to go ahead and replace everything, and I have everything I need here. So the x is going to be replaced with du, 2u du. And then I'm going to have inside the radical x, x will be replaced with u squared, and square root of x is going to be u. So we get this type of integral. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this integral in, in an interesting way. Obviously, at this point, again, there's a couple different ways to go about it, and I'm going to the following some algebraic manipulation method. Okay, so this is how it goes. I'm going to subtract 1 from 2u and add 1. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this. Maybe you already noticed why I'm doing this, but if you haven't, in case you haven't noticed, I'll tell you what it is. Now, the reason why I subtract 1 from 2u is because the derivative of u squared minus u is 2u minus 1. If, if you differentiate this function, then you will get 2u minus 1. But I have 2u, I don't have 2u minus 1. So what I'd like to do is subtract 1, but then I have to add it back so that it balances out. Okay, so cool. At this point, I'd like to separate them, right? So how do I separate? Well, I'm, I can write it as a sum of two different integrals and integrate each one and then add that at the end so that it's kind of easier, a little easier to solve. So the first part is going to be 2u minus 1 divided by the square root of u squared minus u du. That's going to be my first piece. And the second piece is obviously what's left over, du over the square root of u squared minus u. Now, the right-hand side, or the second integral, rather, looks simpler, but it's not actually simpler. And you'll notice that a lot of interesting things happen when we try to evaluate that integral. The first one is kind of easy, though, because what I can do is I can kind of replace u squared minus u with something. For example, let's call this y. And don't ask why, OK? So if I do that replacement, what am I getting? OK, well, it just says that if y is equal to u squared minus u, then dy is going to be 2u minus 1. Remember, to evaluate the differential, we have to differentiate first and then multiply by the differential of u, which is du. So notice that that's in the numerator. And I already have the denominator in the square root. So I get a real simple expression here. What I get is basically dy over y. And you should already know this, but let me tell you, uh, there's a really quick way in case you haven't recognized this already. Uh, you can kind of go out and put a 2 here and then multiply by 2 on the outside. They're going to cancel out. But what is the, oops, I forgot to put the square root. That's why it doesn't look right. But yeah, so it's the 2 times the square root of y and I have a 2 outside. Now, why did I put a 2 there? Because if you think about the derivative of which function is equal to d something over 2 times the square root of that thing, you should recognize it's the square root function. In other words, if you differentiate square root of y, you get 1 over 2 times the square root of y. Why is that happening? Because if you write it as y to the power 1 half and differentiate, you'll get what I'm talking about. So this is the first part. I'm not putting the c yet constant because I'm going to do that at the end. So don't blame me for that, OK? Because we're not done yet. So what am I going to do with the second part? Well, the second part is actually more interesting. And obviously, y is equal to that. So this, at the end, is going to be 2 times the square root of u squared minus u. So that's going to be my first part. And the second part is pretty interesting because I'm going to be doing a lot of interesting manipulations on that integral. Let's go ahead and do that. So 
In this case, like I have u squared minus u, but you can factor it, yes, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it a little differently. What I want to do here is I want to complete the square. How can I do that? Well, I can just write this as u squared minus u plus one fourth and then minus one fourth. Now you might be asking, asking where does one fourth come from? Well, it comes from half of the coefficient of u squared. So to keep a long story short, I'm getting a perfect square here. Isn't that perfect? Well, it's u minus 1 half squared. So let's go ahead and write it that way. So I get the u over the square root of u minus 1 half squared minus 1 fourth. Now, the reason why I write that is because if you can get a perfect square under the radical, then you're good because you can use some trigonometric substitution. I know it's not a everybody's favorite and not everyone likes trigonometric substitutions, but they play an important role in integrals, so we have to use them sometimes. Okay, cool. Now, what am I going to do? Oops, I said cool again. I'm, I apologize. Anyways, so what am I going to do? Well, here's what I'm going to do. You should know this, definitely, but if you have in the integrand, is that how you say it? Or something like that. If you have u squared minus a squared, where a is a constant, if you have this type of integral, which is what we have, then it makes sense if you replace u with a times secant of an angle, like let's call that theta. Well, why? Because if you square u, you get a squared secant squared minus a squared, and from here you get a squared times secant squared minus 1, which is equal to tangent squared. So it gives us a really nice thing under the radical, and then we can just go off of that. So that's what I'm going to do here. Let's go ahead and replace u minus 1 half with 1 half of secant theta. This means that u is equal to 1 half plus 1 half of secant theta. We can take care of that at the end, no worries. So what does this give us? Well, I can find the du from here. du is going to be the derivative of the right-hand side, which is, remember the derivative of secant is secant times tangent, and this information is super important because that's going to be useful at the end. And of course, don't forget to multiply by d theta. So that's my du here, and I have the u minus 1 half, so let's go ahead and make those replacements. But remember, when you replace u minus 1 half with 1 half of secant theta, and that's going to be squared, and you're going to subtract 1 fourth from it. This is going to be 1 fourth secant squared minus 1 fourth, which is 1 fourth times the quantity secant squared minus 1, which is equal to tangent squared. So that's going to basically equal 1 fourth multiplied by tangent squared theta. If you square root that, you're going to get 1 half of tangent theta. So this expression at the bottom is just going to equal 1 half of tangent theta. Remember that. And du is right here. Here's our du. So we're going to replace that with du. Okay, let's go ahead and do that here and see what happens. Replace the du with one half of secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. That's a mouthful, right? Divided by, remember the square root of that thing is equal to one half of tangent theta, and that's it. We simplified it beforehand so that we don't have to worry about it once we start integrating. Now, I'm going to integrate this function at, uh, to the end, and then we're going to put it together with our expression from the first part, and then our solution will be complete. Okay, let's proceed. Notice that a lot of things cancel out, which is what's cool about this trigonometric substitution. That's why I like it. So you can cross out the one half, you can cross out the tangent, and you end up with a very simple expression. Well, you think so? Well, it looks simple, but it's not that simple because the, unfortunately, the integral of secant is not simple. It requires some manipulation, some operations, some stuff. And there's different ways to go about it. I believe there's at least three ways to solve it, including the tangent theta over 2 or z equals something. Remember that substitution? I don't know what it's called. There is a special name for it, but it doesn't matter. So that's one way to do it. Another method, I'll be presenting the two other methods here, but I'm not necessarily going to work all of them because I don't want to keep this video too long. Okay, so one method is writing this as d theta over cosine theta, obviously it's the reciprocal, and then multiplying the top and the bottom by a cosine theta, because that's a really nice trick, by the way. We use this trick a lot, especially with the powers of e to the power x. Maybe one day we're going to do a you know, video on that one. But what you get from here is actually significant because at the bottom you get cosine squared, which I can write as 1 minus sine squared. Now what's really significant about that is that you can do u substitution again. So if you go ahead and call uh, u equals sine theta, 
then du is going to be cosine theta d theta. So you're basically going to be getting something like du over 1 minus u squared, which is kind of easy to integrate because it's just a rational function. But again, this takes some time to do. I'm not going to get into the details, but I'm just going to show you what you're, you need to do and you can carry out the calculations. Basically, what I need to do is use partial fractions to separate this into two integrals, which can then be integrated real quick because this is going to be ln of something and the second part is also going to be ln of something. So that, that's going to be pretty easy. Now, the second method that I'd like to talk about, of course, you can call this third as well because there's already the z or t method uh, I mentioned with the half angle. The other method is actually pretty slick. You know, uh, you, you go ahead and take uh, secant theta and you multiply it with something. And that thing just transforms it into something amazing. And who discovered this? I don't know, but it's beautiful. So you go ahead and multiply secant theta by secant plus tangent and divide by that. Or of course, you're going to keep the d theta. But notice that from here, we get something awesome because look at this. We get secant squared plus secant times tangent, right? In the numerator. And in the denominator, we get secant plus tangent. What's significant about this, what's really cool is that, oops, I said cool again, uh, is the derivative of the denominator is the numerator because the derivative of secant theta, remember, is secant times tangent. There you go. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. There you go. So if you call this w, because I already used the u and the y, or you could call something else, we'll get something like the w over w, right? And this is obviously the ln function. And then at the end, we can put the c. So don't worry about this right now. Okay, if you want, we can put the c here. Now, we got our integral, but what is w? w is equal to secant plus tangent. So this is going to be our second integral. And now we're going to put the pieces together. Okay, cool. Now, let's keep the c here and then move the first function we're just going to add. But this is still in the theta form, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and put it together. What was our first one? Remember, we go back here. Our first integral was 2 times the square root of u squared minus u. 2 times the square root of u squared minus u. That's our first part. Plus, you have the ln secant theta plus tangent theta. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back substitute everything and then write everything in terms of x. Okay? Let's go ahead and do that. Now, this is the funnest part. Now, what is u equal to? Obviously, we call the square root of x u. So, this is going to be 2 times the square root of x minus square root of x. This is the first part. And the second part takes a little bit of manipulation and calculation. So let's go ahead and do that first. And then I'm going to write it in and we'll finalize this. So what is secant theta? If you remember, uh, if you go back a little bit, like when we used our substitution, we said that, okay, let this be the secant theta. Okay, what was that? It was this one, right? So from here, we can basically isolate secant theta. If you multiply both sides by 2, for example, in this equation, you're going to be getting what? Secant theta is equal to 2u minus 1. That was easy, right? Okay, so we can write secant theta as 2u minus 1. But I'm also going to need the tangent theta, so let me go ahead and draw a right triangle and e evaluate tangent theta. So let this be my theta, 2u minus 1. So that's the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm going to be putting the 2u minus 1 here in the hypotenuse and adjacent side is going to be 1. If you use the Pythagorean theorem, call this h, you're going to be getting the h value from there, right? So it's going to look like h squared plus 1 is equal to 4u squared minus 4u plus 1. 1 cancels out and h becomes the square root of that, which can, of course, be written as 2 times the square root of u squared minus u. And this expression should be familiar to you because remember, at the beginning, we had something like this. Okay, and actually that was the integral of the first part, right? So it's kind of interesting too. Well, since h is uh, tangent theta because the adjacent side is 1, so this is also equal to tangent theta. And of course, since u is equal to square root of x, I can just write this as 2 times x minus the square root of x under the radical. Okay, so that's my tangent theta. I'm going to go ahead and substitute that here in the expression and I'll finalize this and we'll be done. Okay, so the second part of this is going to look like this then, the following. I'm going to have the ln of secant theta. What is secant theta? 
Remember, secant theta is equal to 2u minus 1. But u here, we have it. But u is equal to square root of x. Also remember that. So secant theta is basically 2 times the square root of x minus 1. What about tangent theta? Well, tangent theta, we just found it. It's 2 times the radical x minus square root of x. And then at the end, we're going to be adding our constant c. So this is going to be our answer for this problem. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you later.